let's start with the with the number one question is who are you well my name is mark carter and um i'm a delaware native um grew up in milford so what are some of the most foreign places that you've been to a couple that stand out are uh, the republic of georgia and then i went to south america to a country called paraguay so you've been all over the place next question why sussex you know, Sussex, I love the ocean. I love the water, um, the state parks. What's up, Sussex? Welcome to another episode of I Am Sussex. I am here, I am here, I am here with the one and only Mark Carter. Mark, how are you doing today? I, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Phenomenal. And you know, I um, I was going to, I'll share your title later, but I, 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 I just have to say that you're original title is as the director of coolness right like <laughs> I, I i've seen you over the years right interacted with you and everything you do and we're gonna touch on that everything you do is just so freaking cool man you're a surfer you're like you into nature you're doing all the things that uh many of us want to do so let's start with the with the number one question is who are you well, my name's Mark Carter, and um, I'm from I'm a Delaware native. Um, grew up in Milford, Delaware. Uh, grew up on a farm there. Um, not a large farm, but uh, a lot of acreage for a kid to run around in the woods. And um, that was my, I guess, my connection to nature was, um, you know, I'm, I'll date myself a little in the sense, you know, it's pre-cell phone, pre internet pre most video game things and everything else and um so you just ran outside and ran around and i had a lot of acres and uh, a lot of woods to explore and play in and then after that you went you went to um college where so i went to school in virginia at the virginia military institute um it was uh at that time it was an all-male military school and um i studied history there and i knew i wanted to go into the marine corps and um i Graduated there in 1996, and I was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. And uh, I was commissioned on my dad's birthday, which was really cool because he was a Marine in the 1960s, and it was a special, um, a special day in more more ways than one. I bet he was. And then when you went into the Marines for eight years, you was the public affairs officer in in the U.S. Uh, Marine Corps. Thank you for your service. Uh, I I enjoyed um, every aspect of the Marines. Um, and uh, serving, um, and I was a public affairs officer, so essentially, I uh, joke around and say, sometimes you might be like hanging outside of an airplane, taking a really cool picture of a guy jumping out of the airplane, uh -huh. or you're taking a picture of the general saluting someone and um, you know pinning an award on. So you kind of covered all aspects of the, the Marines, and that was what was exciting was every day was different, and uh, some days you're sleeping out in the field, flying on helicopters and shooting things. Um, other days you're um, you know living the good life, uh, going to a you know, a, a nice dinner uh, in an embassy in a foreign country. So it was a real great way to be exposed to all kinds of stuff around the, the country and the world, really. So what are some of the most um, foreign places that you've been to? Um, I would say a couple that stand out are uh, the Republic of Georgia, so um, where the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, there's a, a country there that's about the size of Kentucky called Georgia. And um, it's right on the, uh, the Russian border. Um, that was amazing deployment. I spent about probably um, five months there and uh, we were training a unit on mountain warfare. Um, so we were in some of the most beautiful mountains in the world. And, um, and it was just exciting because that's where I actually would go into the embassy a lot because I was doing a lot of community relations um, for the, you know, for the U.S. military uh -huh. at that time, as well as going out in the mountains and, uh, you know, working with the infantry guys, doing all the training that was going on. And then I went to South America to a country called Paraguay, Paraguay. Um, yeah. uh, dead smack in the middle of South America. Uh -huh. But they have a navy because there's so many rivers. And uh, I joke around and say it was like um, sort of like my heart of darkness, you know, by Conrad, um, that book where I got on this boat and for like five and a half hours just trekked through the Chaco and this river and like ended up in this tiny village. And that was the most remote place I've probably ever I've ever been in the world. No way. So. You've been all over the place. Next question, why Sussex? Why you chose to come back to Sussex? Well, so 
I will I throw the caveat out that our farm was just across the Mississippian River, so technically I was born in Kent County, uh-huh. and um, or I grew up in Kent County. Um, however, um, you know Milford has uh, I, is where I went to school, and um, it was Sussex and Kent County, so I had friends all over, and um, you know Sussex, I love the ocean, I love the water, um, the state parks. Uh, I remember in I don't know, uh, elementary school, you know, you went to Lewis to go to the state park to sing and um, discover critters. And at that time, you know, you felt like you were at the edge of the world. Yeah. And um, and that feeling never left me. And, you know, coming back, uh, I have family here. Uh, I have a very close family. So my parents are here, my brother, my sister. Um, and then I've grown a family here and it's a great place to to be and I'm trying to expose my kids to all those same things getting them muddy and picking up fiddler crabs and uh, stepping on sharp things and being like hold on that's a crustacean that's not a you know (laughs) something bad (laughs) you know it's awesome that you say that about the state park I've taken they do this tour of the point and the history you know and it does feel like I remember the last time I did it it was it was a cool wet morning right and really foggy as we were going around and it does feel like the edge of the world you know it's just we we have so many wonders right here um currently you are the director of development for the delaware center of the inland bay right talk to me about that so the uh, delaware center for the inland bays um Really, if you think of the three different bays that are inland, so um, the most iconic thing folks recognize is that that Indian River Bridge. You know, it's beautiful, lit up at night, very neat looking structure. So if you're standing at that bridge and you look north, you're looking at the Rehoboth Bay. If you look due west and catch the most beautiful sunsets, you're looking at Indian River Bay. And then if you look south, there's a bay called Little Asselwoman Bay, which is basically South Bethany, um, Fenwick Island. And, um, and then the entire watershed of that. So the watershed is, uh, you know, more than just a big body of water. It's the streams, the rivers, the farmland that connects to it, um, the, the neighborhoods, the communities. And that entire watershed is uh, essentially the center is, uh, um, you know, there to help keep that place safe so that, you know, my kids and grandkids one day and things like that and your kids and all can experience what we experience here. And when you're saying keeping it safe, what do you mean by that? Keeping it safe from what? So, you know, when you look out at uh, water, you've got all kinds of things. You've got all the species that are out there. So the horseshoe crabs, the ospreys, the ter- diamondback terrapins, um, oysters, shellfish, um, all the fish that are too many to name. So you've got all the species that depend on, you know, the quality of the water, the bay grasses that grow there, um, and then you've got um, the human piece of it. There's, you know, folks love to recreate, paddle, go for um, just a boat ride, to go fishing. Um, businesses depend on that. There's oyster farmers out there. There's, um, you know, folks move here because they want to enjoy nature. And sometimes it's just the view and enjoying looking out there and saying, you know, there's the estuary and there's this, you know, sunset that's gorgeous and, a, and an eagle or an osprey goes by. So really the center works to protect it through science. Um, We have an entire department dedicated to water quality monitoring, um, species surveys, restoration, reforestation. Um, So that's one element. Um, Education is a huge piece. And we have James Farm, uh, which is a, it's the James Farm Ecological Preserve, about 150 acres. And we offer just about every program we offer down there is free. Um, so that anybody can participate and come out. And um, our environmental educators believe on hands-on, experiential environmental learning. Can you talk to me a little bit, because I read a little bit about the history of the farm, right? Because right now the farm is owned by who? So the farm, um, historically, uh, there was a family that owned the farm. Mm -hmm. And then they, um, as they, um, you know, as Delaware evolved and changed and, you know, there's development, there's, um, you know, there's big farms, small farms, there's all kinds of things that have happened here, um, roads and infrastructure that mm-hmm. wasn't here. So, you know, like anything, they wanted to protect a piece of land. So the, um, the lineage of that family said, we want to make sure this land is protected and we want it to, you know, be up here on the bay on, in this case, Indian River Bay. And um, we want to protect it and we want it to be a place people can come and enjoy nature and um, learn. 
So that land was basically given to Sussex County and the county um, doesn't necessarily, you know, run parks and different yeah. things. Right. And, um, but they partner and they collaborate and they worked with the center for the inland bays to become the manager of this, this land. Um, so that 150 acres, James farm is, um, owned technically by the county managed by the center and, um, open to everyone, um, from dawn to dusk. And now why, why did you choose the inland bay as that project that you was going to work so hard for? Uh, me personally? Uh -huh. um, I, well, I joke around and say I'm a Pisces, so I'm automatically part of water. Uh -huh. um, but um, I've always been into um, paddling, surfing. Uh, I've always been wet in the sense that um, we had a stream in my backyard growing up, and I would just disappear into that stream, and I would walk you know, a mile through my stream until I ended up on the Murdochill River. And then I come back covered in like what was essentially, you know, marsh mud and um, an estuary. But when you're 12, you're like, I don't know what that is really. Um, so I guess it was in my in my blood a little bit uh -huh. or, you know, at least in my clothes, like my mom would say, washing them and everything. Um, but uh, I just I love the water and I know it's important in every aspect of life. I mean, for our survival, for the economy for all of nature for um, everyone so I guess I'm just drawn to environmental work but also especially connecting to the water because I know what it's given me in life and I'm hoping that it's fulfilling a lot of other people in life too it sure is tell us some uh, about some of the programs they they have um, inland has coming up so uh, from programs and such we just, the other day was the first day of spring. So we had our first day of spring um, education program. So Jackie and Maddie are our two educators and they are amazing um, at what they do. And they walked them that day, about 20 folks came out and um, first day of spring, everyone, you know, you get that first bit of sun and you want to yeah. run to the landscaping place and, you know, buy plants. So they talked about, you know, wildflowers and the importance of native plants a little and also everyone got a little seed pack you know they got to make themselves and take home that day so that was our first little kickoff to the season and um, that was also the you know when the needle just ticked to say okay Jackie and Maddie we probably won't see them until September the end of the month because they're going to be out there three four days a week um, running programs um, non-stop all yeah. summer long and those are a lot of educational programs that are some are geared to children, like the journey up the coast. Uh, we work with a sister organization, um, partner group down in Maryland called the Maryland Coastal Bays. So we're the Little Aspen Bay connects to their bays, so we're all connected. It's the everything's you know downstream type of mentality. So we work with them where some kids learn from the their bays and then they move up into our bays and vice versa. Uh, so that program is geared to to youth um, and then there's adult programs that are geared to everything from our you know we do lecture series where we talk about um, you know what you can do in your own backyard how you can work with your homeowners association to you know maybe there's a common area to look at how can we make this you know um, a sanctuary for something uh, so those are program type things through our education world our science team they basically just put the skiff the wa the boats back in the water and um, so they'll be dropping water quality um, uh, sons, I believe they're called. I'm a history major. I'm not a scientist. Uh -huh. I'm not going to pretend to be. Uh, so I, I joke around and say they look like something that Boba Fett wears on his backpack. And they drop these things in at all these uh, monitoring stations, and then they're out there monitoring nonstop all year, all summer long from basically now till really November, so really a good portion of the year. And then we have our teams that are getting trained up for our horse crab surveys, osprey surveys, fish surveys, terrapin surveys. And those are done a big thanks to volunteers because we have an amazing volunteer force that works with our science team and our um, educators to be able to do all of these things. So those are things that are happening uh, in that element in the sense of education and the science of um, the center. So aside from a bunch of our programs, we have lots of events that are open to the public. Um, and we're really kind of hitting that season so in the month of april we have what we're calling the green screen it's a uh, one night film night with some environmental films that's taking place uh april 19th uh just ahead of earth day and uh, to kind of get people excited to get outside we also have on earth day itself we'll be doing a, uh, a coastal cleanup 
um, the Bethany Fenwick Chamber uh, does a community cleanup, and we're going to bring in a coastal element to it and clean up on areas that touch the bay um, on Earth Day itself, running all morning long, um, 8 to noon, and, uh, you know, in the state park, north side, south side, Savage Ditch Kayak Access Area, and then some other locations down that way. We've got in uh, June, uh, actually, pardon me, let me back up, May, we have a big event that takes place at James Farm. So this one is uh, kind of a partnership event between the center and Denrec. And um, what is, it's the Water Family Fest and Native Plant Sale. That's the first Saturday in May, May 6th. And that event will be a native plant sale. So some local um, purveyors of native plants that to come in and you can, you know, get some things to go home. Uh, we also have educational activities that our team is out there on the farm doing. I think there's seining out by the water's edge. There's, you know, some horseshoe crab programs. There's a, a reading nook with nature books and such. And then Denerec will have about a dozen exhibitors there that cover the various aspects. So like you want to learn about soil management, water management, um, you know, backyard habitats. Uh, I think you know, there's a whole bunch of opportunities to learn. Um, June, we're going to put people on the water because the best way to protect something is to be, you know, like in this case, saturated with it, I guess, if you fall off your paddleboard. Uh, we're doing a paddle race. It's called um, Stand Up for the Bays. It's a paddle race um, for stand-up paddle boards, OC1s, OC2s, uh, surf skis. So uh, think like the, the old old episodes of Magnum PI, I guess. Uh -huh. And um, that's happening on June 3rd at Holtz Landing State Park. And there will also be um, a bluegrass band, food trucks, um, we'll have some uh, refreshing beverages um, for grown-ups and younger um, or, you know, um, and then different exhibit, uh, you know, education exhibits happening. And that's all day um, on Saturday, uh, June 3rd. And then our big event of the year, probably our biggest event, is Decked Out. Um, it's called Decked Out because it used to happen on our, our tiny deck at our all office, right. and it's grown. And uh, this year will be at the Hyatt in Dewey. They've got a beautiful deck overlooking uh, Rehoboth Bay and Thompson Island, which is one of the projects we're actually working on out of Thompson Island. And um, what we have there is think of a, a gala, but totally beach casual. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, we'll have oysters, good drinks and beverages, um, fun music, um, We'll have a little that that location uh, allows us to do some great, um, I guess not storytelling, but um, you know, kind of telling about like an update on what we're doing in a sense because um, we've got some AV capability in there this year um, to promote and talk about programs and different things, and then we'll have a great live auction um, and silent auction that go with that as well. Um, so last year we had cool experiences out on the bay that you could um, you know bid on. Uh, so that's a, a big event we have, and that one's, you know, several hundred people um, overlooking, you know, a great sunset. Man, I am really looking forward to the season because everything sounds phenomenal, man. Like, there's going to be a lot of freaking fun. It's going to be. I'm excited. Um, you know, the summer is uh, the season for um, definitely for Sussex County. Um, the cool thing is um, – we're hoping to bring in some other fun in the off season too okay. to keep people excited all excited. year long. That's so awesome, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any requirements to become a volunteer? So we do offer trainings because um, a lot of times um, everyone loves the horseshoe crab. I mean, it's on our logo. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's other companies that that's an iconic symbol and it's our state marine animal. And, um, you know, when folks think of Delaware, they think of, the horseshoe crab so a lot of times you you're just like oh there's a bunch of them i can just go out there and count them but there's there's a process so yes there's training that goes on in the sense of how we can collect the data um, so folks can participate in that training in a couple ways we have on our website currently like when all the trainings are and then we also record those so like if you're unable to attend you can um, participate in the training and then still come out to volunteer and those are on our website why, from your personal perspective, what are some of the benefits um, that the young and the old get from volunteering, and why is it so important that the local community get involved? So volunteering, I think, is, you know, there's the task that's being done, 
the, okay, we're counting horseshoe crabs or we're picking up trash or we're doing this. It's, and the task is almost the simple part. The deeper part is the connections that happen. For some folks, it is, that may be their connection to nature. That may be their connection to a new friend they meet and now there's a community. And that it's community is everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the end of the day, we're all, working towards a better place right. and that's the key so volunteering is really you know getting a job done but also creating connections between nature and humans community um, folks that may never have met before um, and now all of a sudden their friendship circle grows and they're you know they might get introduced to volunteer for something else and it's this ripple that's and right. that's that's really the um, you know a lot of volunteering I think could you speak to one experience that you have um, been part of, of someone like having that aha moment, being involved with what you do? Um, yes, I'm trying to think from there's, I mean, because I've been fortunate that for the last, you know, 15, well, really, I mean, since I left for the Marine Corps, it was, you know, service work ultimately. And um, I... I've spent my whole life getting to be a part of good things. I always say, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, right you know, right. you're, you're, I was at, when I was in my previous life working beer and benevolence, I was working with nonprofits. Um, so I've always had that luxury of seeing lots and lots. So it's, it's actually a really hard question because it's like, which one do you pick mm -hmm. in a sense? Because there's more good than bad out there at That's the end right. of the day. And, you know, there's so many things. So I could, you know, to, to use something that ties to nature, I think, um, you know, I love when you see a an, an, an older person from a family or a community engaging with a younger person because that's a passing of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's a passing of connection. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, this person is working on it and we know the next generation is working on it. So as simple as seeing like a, a, a trash cleanup along the coast uh, or the beach planning that just went on that Denrec did where they had hundreds of people out there planting thousands of pieces of beach grass. And when you looked, there was everybody, all ages and everyone was there. So I think there's just a ton of uh, different examples to see out there. You know, I'm gonna tell you, I um, when Dogfish first came to Milton, right? And then you went to work for Dogfish. And I, mentioned this to you many times i remember going into the backyard in the mornings for coffee and i would see you come in with this mug um you, you used to wear some socks like <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't know if it was to, to prevent ticks from getting on you with this funky truck and I, i'm telling you know that's so important for us to see that in community because to this day i feel that that played a part in me becoming more adventurous and going into the state park watching individuals like you, like you always had that smart, you always had some funky shirts on. And I'm like, man, that's some cool stuff right there, right? Because life can be so heavy at times that we forget. And I'm always doing this on social media saying, man, go get what's yours. It's the, the state park is there. Your tax dollars is paying for this free to you. Like it's right. Go, just go get some. Right. You know, just on every Sunday, I love going to go see the sunrise. Just go get some. But for so many years, I was just so caught up in the rat race that, you know, your light starts deeming. And people like yourself, what? You see, like, the funky watch you got on right now. <laughs> so watching you in the mornings, I'm like, y'all, wait a minute. I, it's, this is right here. So I, I just want to once again just say thank you. With that, it'll lead me to my next question. What are you currently reading? So, um... I kind of go through spurts on my reading. Like in the winter, I'll devour books because, you know, it's, it's nice to get up, have that cup of coffee and um, or to sit up at night because it's dark early. So you're kind of, you know, enjoying that. So in the winter, I'm just devouring books. Come summer, I'll lighten up that load a little bit because I just want to be outside till the last light. But right now I'm reading a book, um, uh, The Dog Stars um, by Peter Heller. It's a... Uh, uh, I, I, I work with lots of good stuff and I love good stuff, but I love reading in apocalyptic novels. Um, mm -hmm. So, and stories. Um, so this is sort of uh, kind of timed with like how our current times were with like COVID and the mm -hmm. pandemic and different things. And it's, it's a story about a guy who 
Um, he lives in an old airport hangar and with his dog and he has one neighbor who's, uh, probably a little too militant, you know, but, um, they, they figure out getting along and working. And, um, this guy is, you know, one day the radio comes on, there's a transmission and he's like, there's gotta be something else out there. And it's, it's taking that big step one to be like, I have my safety spot and I'm going to go out there and I'm about halfway through. So I don't know what's happening happened yet. Okay. And, uh, I wouldn't divulge, but, uh, great, great read. And then, um, I like to read a couple books at once. So, um, a friend of mine, um, gave me a book for my birthday this year and it's a collection of environmental writing from essentially Thoreau. Everyone thinks Thoreau, Thoreau, Thoreau. And I mean, groovy guy, a hundred percent. And I love his books, but there's so much writing beyond Thoreau and on environment. And this is from Thoreau to today. So, um, you know, it might have something by Patagonia's fi- founder on there. It might have something from Rachel Carlson. Uh, you know, I think like Al Gore's in there. So like names that people can know in the last decade are like, okay. okay. And that book is a collection of short stories, essays and such. And it's a great one. You read one, put it down, come back a few days later, read another one. And um, I believe that's the uh, um, American Earth. And it's kind of all U.S. nature writers and such. Understood. If someone in the local community wanted to get involved with for uh, with the cent- Delaware Center for um, Inland Bays, what would they have to do? The easiest thing is um, if you visit our website, and uh, we have a – so Nevette Perez is our – citizen scientist volunteer quarter and she is the um one the the one of the funniest people i work with i think um but she is she is that person that connects i mean she connects to all of our volunteers we have over 300 folks that volunteer over the course of the year and um so she manages that program. So you can go to the site and there's a link to email her direct. And then there's also links to um, the different trainings and kind of talks about the, the opportunities that are there. Um, you can call us, you can visit us. Um, our office is located right at north side of Indian River Inlet where the Coast Guard is, uh-huh. where their old barracks. Um, so we're right next to her. If you go to the Coast Guard, we're the big white building right next to them. And um, that's us. Um, and then... You know, at our farm, we've got an information kiosk as well that talks about different events and opportunities. Um, so it's really easy just to reach out to us. And uh, I know Nevette is always on point reaching out back to yeah. connect. And, yeah, then, and she's from, I read, she's from Puerto Rico, man. She is. And she yes. got, her, her history is phenomenal, man. Like, she's knowledgeable in what she does. She is a scientist through and through. Um, she's uh, studied in Puerto Rico. She's also uh, went to school here in Delaware. And um, she, you know, she's she is the, the greatest person to work with citizen scientists. And um, they we have a program, the Master Naturalist Program, which is um, not exclusive to the center. However, different groups will act as like, I guess, lead agencies, if you will. Uh-huh. And we're the, you know, the lead one for downstate here. And um, you can go to that as you know, like anyone can go to that. It's basically you participate in so many hours of education. And you learn, you know, a little deeper dive than, you know, reading the information at, you know, kiosk and this and that. It's a little deeper dive. It's not a, you know, four years of study. But um, you read that. Um, you, so you have all these classes, different guest speakers come in, scientists address different aspects. And then you have so many hours. And I, I should know the amount of hours. I'm not positive. I want to say it's like 40 hours, perhaps, over the course of a year that you give back and you participate in survey work and volunteer work and such and outreach work and all for the environment. And um, she kind of helps to, you know, um, foster that program along as well. Understood. I like that title, Citizen Scientist. Yes. And that's the the Master Naturalist is the program where you kind of become the citizen scientist extraordinaire, I guess, would be the way to look at it. What is a quote that you live by? Uh, gosh, I love reading and on, I love quotes, but I, I'm a big, a gigantic fan of, um, what Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia does. And he has one quote and, um, basically he, t- it's about climbing a mountain and it's, he's like, it's, you know, it's climbing the mountain, not getting to the top that wow. matters. And I think that translates to so many things in life, because if you focus on the top, you forget the journey and it's what you do along the way. So, you know, pick up the trash, talk to people, help someone that needs it and do that. And that's the key. So I think that resonates with me. Everything. 
A hundred percent. Does it value a message? Yes. That's right. You know, and um, is there a question that you wish I would have asked? Oh, goodness. I would say the question, um, sometimes it's just like, what are you listening to these days? Because uh, music is, uh, I was telling my kids, you know, I'm a considerable bit older than them. But I was like, if I lost, if, if at this moment in your life, you lost your vision or you lost your hearing, well, it, and you could pick which one, what would you pick? And my kids were like, we would lose our hearing because we still have a lot to see in life. And I was the opposite. I was like, I can have someone describe it to me because I have enough points of reference. I'll lose my, my vision because I don't think I could give up music. And I can't play anything and I can't sing, but I love music. So what are you listening to? I listen to, I try to listen to a good diversity of stuff and it's sort of seasonal, you know, like I like to make some playlists and um, so I have my spring list going right now and it's, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of reggae, a little bit of, uh, you know, folk, um, like more like, um, I love, I love a banjo. Um, so a little bit of bluegrass, but if like, I would say right now there's a guy, Andrew Bird, that um, he, he's probably who's on my playlist last. And um, he's sort of like a folk Americana kind of guy. Andrew and Bird. Andrew Bird. Yep. Look him up. And uh, yeah, all music, local music. I know we have uh, some local bands we were trying to bring into some, um, different events and things. And, uh, you know, any chance to see live music is uh, the best. So also want to give a shout out to your brother, Matt. Quest Fitness, right? The kayaks. Um, and uh, he always told me every time I run into him in Lewis, and he said, "Hey, because I used to work out with him years right. ago." And he he tells me, "Hey, you don't need to pay. Just come volunteer, helping me um take these carry kayaks. some kayaks <laughs> back and forth from the beach, man. That's what's up, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to um have this conversation with you." Well, thank you for having me and yeah. thank you for everything you do in the Definitely community so. and telling people about all the good stuff that's yeah, here. Yeah. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>